Hello everyone. Okay, so I decided for this holiday I wanted to do a vlog of sorts to kind of share holiday as a recovered person. <laughs> Basically, right now, I should be in an Airbnb cottage with my family, Ida and Andrew, just, yeah, in a lovely cottage in Foy in Cornwall. Unfortunately though, after a wonderful drive down and actually met with a someone I've met through Instagram, through my recovery account, who I've become really good friends with. We had a wonderful lunch out, this nice little cafe, went to their new house, saw their dog, like met them. It was just such a lovely time. And then we drove down and we got to the accommodation, having driven through some of the tiniest, most narrow roads ever. <laughs> and basically it was double booked so it's a very long story but for the next kind of two two and a half hours we were trying to get in contact with the host couldn't trying to get in contact with airbnb struggled trying to find if there was anywhere else like hotels anything that would take us because we were literally like what seven or eight o'clock at night in cornwall five people a dog no accommodation yeah, it was all. And then Airbnb were like, oh, don't worry, we've refunded you. Which was nice. Don't get me wrong. Very nice. But we were a bit like, oh, okay. We still, we still don't have anywhere to go. So we've ended up, I'm not sure if anyone is from the UK, they might recognise these wonderful things. We're in a travel lodge. Um, I can't even remember the name. St. Austell? St. Austell? I don't, I don't really know. I don't know how to pronounce it. I also think it's Foy, not Fowey. I think that's the name, how you pronounce the area we to Basically, eventually, we managed to find a lovely lady with another cottage just a bit further along the coast from where we were meant to be staying that had a com that had space for the whole week, um, but from today. So last night we were like, okay, that's fine, brilliant, but we need to find somewhere tonight. So we've managed to find a travel lodge that took us and Ida, and yeah, we stayed the night there. So... I feel like it was absolute chaos, but absolute top quality material for exactly what I wanted this vlog to be. This vlog was meant to be all about how holidaying when you're recovered is so completely different to when you go on a trip and take your eating disorder with you. Like me with my eating disorder, this would have been very stressful. I would have almost certainly ended up last night in the Tesco's that's just attached to this, looking for something that I could have that was appropriate according to my eating disorder, given that we'd been to a cafe and that we'd sat in a car and all these other ridiculous hoops to jump through. And actually, eventually, once we managed to find this place, we just ended up in McDonald's and we had I had Ida, so then I just had to take mine back to the room and we I ate it in the room and then we lay in bed eating McDonald's, watching Bridget Jones and went to sleep. And yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm try. I'm gonna try and splice various videos together. Splice, splice, that's, I don't know if this is the word, like, I don't know YouTube talk. <laughs> I'm gonna try and put them together for this whole video. So I'm not gonna talk too long now. But basically, yeah, last night was very interesting, but would have been completely different and so much more difficult if I'd also have brought my eating disorder on holiday with me. I feel like just the ability to go with the flow. One, to be in a body that is sufficiently nourished and has enough of a energy kind of backlog that actually I'm not constantly living in that empty to low mode. You know, I'm not constantly, the moment I've used that food, it's not like empty, empty, empty. Now I'm like full to half full. So actually, you know, even if it's been a little while and we haven't been able to get, you know, last night we were trying to find accommodation at the time where realistically we'd probably normally have been having dinner. That would have been a big issue because when I was living in that empty to low place, like energy wise, when it came around to dinner time, I was ready for dinner. I needed dinner then, you know, like even if it was like, what, we're eating at seven? What do you mean seven? I, I need dinner at six. Like I couldn't, it, it caused so much stress because my body was right on that. Ooh, I'm doing this a lot and the camera's jiggling, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, my body was right on that place where it was kind of dragging itself from meal to meal, you know? And now I'm not in that place. So actually we could just, I could just concentrate. I wasn't even thinking about food. I was just like, right, we just need to find accommodation. Then once we found this place, it was like, oh, how good. <laughs> 
got here, saw a McDonald's, was like, oh, thank God, McDonald's. Yes. <laughs> so convenient, thank the word. Um, yeah, I went and had that. And yeah, anyway, I'm going to talk for ages. But now, I'm not really sure what the plan is now. I think we're going to sort of fill in the day a little bit until the lady phones us to say that we can drop all our stuff in at the new Airbnb. Ida is wanting to go, I think. She, <laughs> bless her heart, she is as good as God. She is the sweetest dog in the world. But she's very much now sat sort of at the door going, yeah, I'm ready to go now. She's like just curled up in a ball there, like, yep, yeah, I'm ready. Whenever you leave, I'm ready to go. So I think next will be, we'll go and take her somewhere, get some breakfast and yeah, start the holiday. <laughs> it will be so good when we actually get into this cottage and we're like, yes, we're in, let's go. So yeah, anyway, right, speak to you soon. Look at that little face. Okay, so we ended up having a whole other world of drama today in that the accommodation we thought we'd booked for now has ended up, well, it ended up not going through because their boiler broke. It's the worst luck in the world, but, but, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. We've managed to find somewhere in Tintagel, Tintagel, people that are Cornish, I'm sure are going to be able to pronounce this better and it is amazing. So we spent half of the day literally just trying to find somewhere to stay. And now we have, and it is, it's beyond stunning. It's so nice. Like I will do a walkthrough tomorrow morning, but yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely stunning. And Ida, let me see. How are you feeling about this? <laughs> How are you feeling? She is right next to a stove and is very happy. So yeah, I think Andrew and I are gonna pop to the shops, get some snacks, and yeah, explore a bit. <laughs> Don't throw a sock at me. Anyway, I'll check in soon. Bye. Beautiful the view is from our bedroom. Look. I'm not sure if you can hear, but the wind is incredible. You can hear all the birds. Stunning. Morning. So we then spent a good chunk of yesterday trying to find another accommodation. Um, and we finally found one. And actually we have, we have lucked out in a big way. This place is absolutely stunning. Like it's so perfect. I'll do a little video tour. Um, yeah, it's amazing. So I want to do this as like a bit of a vlog and show what we're doing, but I also really want to insert in some little tips and things and recovery rate related stuff um and i definitely wanted to answer some of the questions that you had sent me on instagram relating to just recovered life versus eating disorder life and just little bits and pieces and i was lying in bed this morning and woke up and i was a bit hungry so i went downstairs and got some food and it got me thinking whilst i sat there i thought you know what two things one if you are lying in bed at whatever time it is that you wake up and you are hungry just get up go downstairs and eat and two, don't have to label it as breakfast. It's just food. Like if you wake up at 4 a.m. and you're hungry, I don't do that anymore because I'm energy balanced. But when I was in recovery, I did that a lot. Just get up, go downstairs. You don't need to start freaking out about what it is. Is it breakfast? How am I going to, what happens? But it's four now and then it's all the time till lunch. All of those worries are only relevant in a world where food is scarce and you are restricting. If you are in recovery and you are committed to that, those things aren't the reality. The reality is, is that food is abundant and you are not restricting your food. And therefore, if you wake up at 4am and you're hungry and you want to go downstairs and eat something, you just get up and go and do that. And it doesn't mean anything. You know, if you wake up, you go back to sleep and you wake up again in an hour and you're like, oh, I'm hungry again. You just eat more. It's not second breakfast or a post breakfast snack. It's nothing. It's just more food. Like that's all it is. So my main tips would be one, if you wake up and you're hungry, just get up and go downstairs and eat. Like I remember with my eating disorder, if I woke up and I was hungry, 
I would either then try and just lie there and wait it out, waiting for the appropriate time to get up and then I could call it breakfast, or I would get up, go and eat something and then drag myself through the morning being like, oh, but now I've had breakfast, so I can't have that. And if I have a snack, but I should wait for my snack. And it's all BS and it's all restrictive. If you are in recovery, that is not your world. You are in a world where food is abundant and you are not restricting it. Therefore, if you are hungry, whatever time, if it's literally 1am in the morning, like get up, go downstairs, eat something. If you want to stay up, then stay up. If you want to go back to sleep, go back to sleep. And when you wake up again or whatever, whatever time it happens to be when you get hungry, you just fancy something more. It's not second breakfast. It's not another. It's just more food. It's just food. So yeah, anyway, today I'm not really sure what the plan is. I think we're going to go to a, a little glen, like a fairy waterfall glen area, which I'm very excited for. And then I think we're going to Port Isaac, which anyone who knows the Doc Martin TV series, I think that's very much a British thing. So I'm not sure. I mean, I might be wrong there. Maybe people do know about it, but I feel like it's very much my parents' era. I grew up watching them watch it. And actually it's really quite good. But basically, it's all set there in Port Isaac. So we're going to go and check that out. Um, hopefully take Ida down to the beach. And yeah, the, the weather is incredible. Like, absolutely. I don't know if this is going to, if this is going to work. But if I tap there. Oh, look at that. Like, this is literally the view from our window. It's incredible. So yeah, I'm going to go and um, check in see. such a lovely day. We explored Tintagel, which was the town that we were staying in, went down to the coast, found a little bay, and then we went to Port Isaac, had some nice lunch, and came back in the evening and watched some telly and just sat together and relaxed. It was really lovely. The only footage I've got from Tuesday is this beautiful sunset walk that I did with my mum along the coastal path. This morning we are making banana pancakes. Mm -mm -mm. So well. <laughs> was the pasta meal that Andrew cooked for us all in the evening. It's my birthday. <laughs> this bed is so, it's so cozy. Um, yeah, 28. 
I've literally been lying here for the last hour being like so awake and so ready. Um, I did a post for Instagram and now I'm just feeling like I feel like just so excited for the day so I think I'm gonna get up now and go and pester everyone because it's like 8 a.m it's definitely it's definitely time to get up <laughs> This is literally so exciting. Hey, okay, so today... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> so basically today we're going to St Nectan's Glen. You can see behind me, I think, the coast, oh, that way. Um, yeah, it's up to like a little walk that goes up to a waterfall. We tried to do it on Monday, but the car parking was full. So we're going today, it's my birthday. Um, Anyway, right, let's go. restaurant for my birthday. It's really beautiful. And Ida's even got her own little bed. Ida, how lovely is that? Oh, bless you. Happy birthday, dear Emily. Happy birthday to you. We are Do I get two wishes? Yes. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> okay, so it's Friday morning and we happen to be staying smack bang in the middle of the red zone, Storm Eunice. Um, anyone UK based probably knows. It's quite eerie because you look outside because there's not many trees around here you can't really see the signs of the wind that much but it is so loud and you can hear i think you can slightly see in this video but you can hear in the distance the sea crashing it's um yeah we are very much staying put today <laughs> currently sat in bed right next to the window with some breakfast listening to the storm I'm very, very grateful that I'm in a solidly built brick house right now. It's pretty intense. It was around this time that the roof above me started making a very strange noise. And we realized that the wind had actually ripped part of the flat roof off. So yeah, I got up and went downstairs okay, and started on a jigsaw. Guys, doing a jigsaw puzzle. The storm is, uh, it's definitely died down a bit. It's very windy outside, so we are having a lovely, chilled out day. Making pretty solid progress, I'd say. I think we're about, oh, well, what do we say, about an hour and a half in? An hour and a half in, and it's a thousand pieces, so yeah, we're having a great little time. <laughs> Finished. Literally looks amazing. I think it's taken us about two and a half hours together, I think. But yeah, it was really fun actually, a really fun one. We spent the rest of the day just reading, playing games and chilling out, and then all sat together and watched a movie in the evening. I didn't do much filming on Saturday, but it was another really lovely, relaxed day to guide her down to the beach again. And then Andrew, Alice and I sat up in the evening playing games and having a few drinks, it was really nice. Oh. Currently sat playing King Domino. <laughs> okay, so I definitely forgot to do this all week and I've just realised as we're packing up. But, there's Haida, 
This is the accommodation. There's this really cute little side room with a little telly. Why are you just following me everywhere? Um, and then this lovely dining room with this such a cool light. And then through here, this is Ida's favorite. Oh gosh, she's made a mess of her. My shoe, Ida. Lovely fire. Ida literally has loved that place. Then this. Nice big telly. And you can't really see it from here properly because of the fence, but it literally looks right out to the sea. <laughs> and then out here, this isn't particularly, but there's a little conservatory area. We had to bring lots of stuff in from the garden because of the storm. Um, and then this way, little toilet, really nice kitchen in here, which is super nice. And then I'll just pop upstairs really fast. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Really nice stairs. Everyone is definitely packing to go. But this is one of the rooms. It's really cute. It has just really nice bathroom. And then our room, which unfortunately, due to uh, COVID. COVID, no, wrong word. Due to... Um, God, I obviously say a lot of due to COVID. <laughs> no, uh, due to Storm Eunice, this, the roof got damaged and we had a leak. So that's why I've pulled the mattress up. But this really cute room. And then we also had a lovely view out, oh, that way, yes. Out to the sea, which is really lovely. So yeah, that is our holiday accommodation. So yeah, basically that's the accommodation. I really should have done it earlier in the week. Uh, especially when all the beds were all laid out. When we first turned up, they were all beautiful with towels and the pillows were so nice. Um, but I completely forgot. So this is the tour on the last day of the holiday. Um, yeah, it's just been so good. Like from start to finish, had such a lovely time. We've already said, right, we've got to come back here again. It's so nice. Um, I'm going to go now though, because we stayed up quite late last night playing games, having drinks and yeah this morning felt quite early even though it's like eight it felt early so i'm gonna go get ready ida ida is gonna be really sad to leave here i feel like she really loves that bed by the fire um but yeah i think we're gonna take her for a quick walk down to the castle so that she's sort of ready for the car journey and then start the five hour journey home <laughs> out on the last walk of the holiday not sure if you can hear it's still really windy taking Ida for a quick walk down to Tintagel Castle and then we'll be packing up the car heading home look how high the water is this is the beach just down from Tintagel Castle we came here the other day and we were literally walking through Merlin's cave and now it's full of water. And that brings us to the end of my holiday vlog. I actually had a really, really good time filming this. Not quite such a good time editing it. It's um, not something that comes naturally to me and it's taken me quite a while, but I'm actually quite proud of how it's all come together. I realised putting it together that after a certain point I sort of forgot about talking about the recovery side of things. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is a Q&A style thing where I'm going to answer those questions that I was sent just before I went away. I suppose on reflection though, that says it all. You know, eating disorders just wasn't a factor in my holiday whatsoever. I went away, had a good time, relaxed, ate, just enjoyed myself and was present and food and food related worries and everything associated with an eating sort of just was not a factor in any way, shape or form.